Oh, of course when the originals is getting amazing, they have to go on a two-week hiatus. Why, CW? Just, just, why? Why do you have to do this to us? Seriously, just why? Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be my review for the original Season 2, Episode 14, I Love You Goodbye. And this episode was just... Holy shit, once again, another fantastic episode. By far the best episode of the season. Absolutely loved this episode. This was might have been the craziest wedding episode I've ever seen in my life. I mean, this wedding episode was so crazy, and just everything that happened, the amount of stuff that happened in this episode was just huge, and so much game-changing stuff. I gotta say, this was definitely the perfect episode to go off on a hiatus with, because it really closes a lot of stories, but it opens a lot of stuff as well, which I love, and... It definitely is better than last year when they had that, like, filler episode and then went on a hiatus. That was really annoying. If you remember last year, guys, it was that episode that was, like, the only bad episode the original has ever given us. And then they just went on a hiatus. Like, that was, like, the worst time that could have happened. But let's get into this episode because it was amazing as usual. So, Cammie's speeding away. First of all, guys, I have no idea what I was talking about last week. Elijah is not dead. Finn, though, could be. Like, this episode, he could be dead. That's what they're thinking, that he's dead and everything. But I don't know what I'm thinking with, uh, you know, uh, Elijah dead. I mean, he's an original. I don't know what I was thinking, guys. I guess I was just so into the episode. But let's get into this episode. So Cammie's speeding away from the safe house with Hope crying loudly in the back. And Cammie's finding a payphone and attempts to make a call. She drops the quarters and she makes an open threat. But to her delight, Elijah's alive. So... That's good. I mean, that, that that that's good, I guess. I mean, I, I was happy to see that Elijah was alive, of course. I'm just turning my camera because I had terrible lighting. Um so that I'm I'm happy to see that Elijah is alive because we need to keep him alive because you know, he's such a good character and everything. Plus the fact that he's an original, so he can't die, obviously. Um which I didn't think of. I don't know why I didn't, wasn't thinking that, but uh people remind everyone reminded me of that. So yeah, I don't know why I was thinking that, guys. I just, I, I, I was thinking that. I don't know why. I just, I just was. Um, so, basically, they, that tells them they need to leave. And Haley's packing to run off to save her daughter between how, you know, basically, Klaus stops her and tells her that she's getting married. And I like this line. He tells her how she's getting married and how she's going to be the queen. And queens do not run. And I really like that Klaus told her this. You know, he's really telling her. Uh, then now that she's getting married, there's a lot that comes with that. And one of the things that she has to be is the queen. She's really going to be the queen to the werewolves. And sh if she wants to be their queen, she needs to not run. I really like that Klaus said that to her because, yeah, it's true. She she shouldn't run. And I thought that was just a really good way to start the episode overall. Definitely really enjoyed that. So Davina's back, of course, which was great to see. Davina's tending to Josh as he wakes up from the trance he was put in by Finn. And just then, Cole walks in. And it's really awkward between the two because you know that Cole, you know why Cole isn't talking to her. You know what he doesn't want, why he doesn't want to talk to her, and you know what's going on with Cole. However, he tells Davina that he was away saving the day. Of course, he's not going to tell her that he is uh, dying because it's just too much for him to go through. It's too much for him, and he knows what's what. And I like that he's not telling her. I like that, but you knew he had to. You just knew he had to. So she's upset because he's not calling her, but she says that he can make it up to her by finishing the mystical dagger. And he's trying to sort out their response for what happened to the wolves who were killed by the vampires. And Klaus is interrupting with the heads of all the wolves who refuse to surrender their daylight rings. And Klaus tells him that the ceremony will help at his place. And so that was really good to see. So meanwhile, Finn's body is being unzipped from his body bag by Freya. And basically... Davina and Cole bring in to try and finish the dagger as Freya tries to bring Finn back to life. So, if something happens, they both drop the dagger, and it looks like they have ma managed to create the dagger. But just when Davina and Cole begin to share a passionate kiss, Cole's effects from his brother's spell begins to resurface when he is awakened. So... Cole's awakened, and, and Finn is now awake, and when Finn was awakened, I'm like, this is not going to end well for Haley's wedding. Luckily, though, he has no idea about Haley's wedding. He does not know about Haley and Jackson's wedding, which is great. So Davina's worried about what happened to Cole, but he shakes it off and tells her that he's fine. He tells her they have a reason to celebrate and asks her to accompany him to the wedding, and of course she agrees. And I really got to say, 
Um, I this was by far the best episode for Davina and Cole. Like out of all the episodes they've had, I saw the most chemistry with them in this episode. And you know that he's being sincere to her now, which I love. I love that we know that he's being sincere. You know, there's no question of should she trust him because that was kind of annoying. I do have to say the whole thing with should she trust him, it just got annoying after a little while. So I like in this episode that we have established that she can trust him and that he's a nice guy and everything. And I like seeing that all. So I thought that was very well done. So. He tells her that they have a reason to celebrate and asks her to accompany him to the wedding, and Cole makes a call to Rebecca and tells her he needs a favor, and Haley's busy getting ready when Rebecca tells her that she will... Now, of course, what I thought he was going to ask her, of course, is that Rebecca said that she was going to help him with his with him dying, so what I thought he was going to do was ask her for some sort of cure or sort of update her on what's going on, and basically, Rebecca is telling Haley that she will be missing the ceremony. We don't really get much with that. She doesn't tell him anything, and... Basically, you. I, what I like is that he, he is working with Rebecca and, and Klaus, which I like seeing. Now, the only reason he's working with Davina and Finn is because Davina does not know that he's actually working with Klaus and Rebecca. So I was hoping he was going to tell Davina this, and I know I was looking forward to seeing when he would reveal all his secrets to her. So basically, Rebecca does a beautiful gesture of picking out a wedding dress for Haley, and Haley asks her if she told Marcel that she's in another body, and Rebecca tells her she's waiting to see how long um, he, you know, she stays last, her stay lasts in the current body. And I like that she said that because, I mean, Marcel really is the guy that she loved. If you remember, Klaus didn't want the two together, and that's why that whole thing, that whole feud between Klaus and Marcel started, because Klaus did not want um, Rebecca and Marcel together. So Rebecca's kind of upset about this. She, I mean, she, I, I don't think she's really thought of this, honestly. I think Haley bringing this up was just sudden for Rebecca. I don't, I think Rebecca just said that because she hasn't really thought of it. I mean, she hasn't really thought too much of Marcel, but I think the reason Haley just brought it up is because she knows that the two of them love each other. She knows that deep down they do. Plus, Haley and Marcel did have that chem, um, Cammy and Marcel had that chemistry and also, Haley and Marcel briefly had something in season one. So, definitely, I think Rebecca and Marcel, I think definitely when this show returns, they're going to start to show that more because we don't see too much of that in this episode. But I thought that was well done that Haley brought that up, just reminding us that Rebecca and Marcel used to date. So, I like seeing that. So Aiden's reunited with Josh, and he's actually happy to see him, and I like seeing Aiden and Josh again, until he breaks the news that they need a time out, because of course that whole thing that happened between vampires and werewolves, and I was surprised that he said that, and Aiden's not happy about this, you know, Josh, Josh, um, you know, Josh is telling him that they need a time out, and Aiden is just thinking of he's being an asshole and everything, and he really is, is taking this very hard. So, Haley's effects on Aiden and his Pax powers could be deadly to vampires, and this is basically why he's doing this, because his Pax powers could be deadly to vampires, and he just wanted to do the right thing. But Josh gets very angry and hurt about this, because he really feels it's something personal. He feels that it's just a difference of werewolf versus vampire. Really, Aiden's doing this to save uh, Josh. He's just doing this for his safety, and that's, that's what's going on, but... Josh doesn't realize that. He thinks that this is something more personal, and I really did feel bad for Josh, I have to say, because, I mean, Josh, while he knows what's going on, he's not as smart. Not really smart, but, you know, Aiden definitely knows a lot more about this stuff than Josh does, so you gotta feel bad for Josh, and I definitely felt bad for Josh in that scene. That was really sad to see. So Jackson and Haley address possible last-minute retraction, but Klaus breaks it up as Cammie and Elijah arrive with Baby Hope, and... Haley is first alarmed because, you know, she's worried that Hope should not be... Of course, the whole thing here was just to hide Hope, but Klaus is assuring her that he has taken precautions and that Finn's not going to come after them and that she has no... Finn has no idea what's going on. I like that he said that to her because, I mean, that's something that was going through my mind. Is, is Finn going to just just basically massacre on this wedding and basically pull a red wedding? Is that what's going to happen here? But luckily, Finn has no idea about the wedding, so that was good to see. And one of the things I do like is while Finn is two steps ahead, as I've said, one of the things I love about Finn is how he's always two steps ahead, there is some stuff he doesn't know. He doesn't know this wedding's going on. He doesn't know that Haley is trying to get full custody of Hope. He doesn't know all this stuff, so I like seeing that. So he knows facts here and there. He knows that Hope is still alive. He just doesn't know where she is. He doesn't know who has her. I mean... I'm just thinking that they're going to give him wrong information. That That's basically what I'm thinking is going to happen, is that they're just going to give him wrong information. And if they keep giving him wrong information, I mean, eventually, yeah, he is going to become suspicious, but he is kind of gullible, I do have to say that. Finn's very smart, but 
we he has a track record of just doing what people tell him to do. So basically, Cla Cammy and Elijah arrive with hope, and basically, Klaus is lecturing Elijah about not trying to persuade Haley to stop the wedding, and he's happy about that. And Elijah's challenging, but still agrees to support family first. And Klaus is surprised that Elijah didn't try to stop the wedding, and he kind of wants him to. Because, of course, he doesn't think Haley and Jackson are good for each other, if you remember. He does not feel that those two really do love each other. He knows that Elijah loves Haley. And I can understand if someone doesn't like Elijah and Haley, because, you know, they tried to, like, beat it down th our throats, basically, in this episode. But I love those two together. I do. I loved their sex scene that they had in the mid-season finale. I loved all their little moments in season one. I really do like these two together. Now, don't get me wrong. I like Haley and Jackson. I think Jackson's a good guy for her. But you can clearly tell that Haley does not love Jackson like Jackson loves Haley. It's just a different sort of attraction. So definitely, if I had to choose Haley and Elijah over Haley and Jackson any day, that's just how I roll with that. So Cole is completely distraught, and he's telling Rebecca that he thought it would be better with him being a witch, no bloodlust or anything. And Haley and Baby Hope are playing, and I, I like that Cole said that to Rebecca, because I was wondering exactly what he, she was going to do for him. So it seems like he wants to turn into a witch, you know, basically. Um, you know, he want, that's why he wanted to be with Davina, because, you know, there'd be no blood or anything like that. So I thought that was interesting on why he chose Davina. You can definitely tell that this feels like Cole's last episode. Definitely it does. Um, I don't want to... I'll talk about what happens with Cole, but this definitely this scene, I'm like... Why is he talking about this? It just feels like Cole's last episode. It really did, and I, I was hoping it wasn't, but again, we have to remember, Cole is not a main character. He is billed as recurring. Daniel Sharp, you know, Dan, Daniel Sharman is, is billed as recurring for a reason, so. Haley and Baby Hope are playing while she gets ready to marry Jackson, and and I thought this was a very well done scene because we haven't really seen too much Haley Baby Hope interaction. We've seen Haley and Hope briefly in the midseason finale, but we haven't seen too much of Haley and Hope interaction. And it was great to see how great of a mother Haley really was to Hope. She's telling her that she's doing all this for her and that she's going to thank her for this. It was just a really sweet scene. It really was nice to see Haley be a mother to Hope because we really just haven't gotten to see it. And I thought that was really good to see. I definitely really enjoyed that. So Jackson comes in, I mean, not Jackson, Elijah comes in, and I love this scene. Elijah's telling her that she looks beautiful and that she's perfect, and that he tries to tell her that he loves her. But she she does not want to hear it, because all the time he could never say it before. And, uh, you know, if you remember last season, any moment that they had together was ruined. Like, there were times where... It seemed like someone was going to have between them. And I like what Haley says to him, that they've had their chance. They've had their chance. He had his chance to say he loved her. And now he needs to accept that she wants to be with Jackson. Honestly, as I said, I don't think that they're going to be endgame. I definitely feel Elijah and Haley are endgame. But right now, she needs to be with Jackson because she just doesn't know if Elijah truly does love her. And she begs him not to say because basically she's completely torn and tells Elijah that Jackson is the man that did say that and thinks that she can be happy with him. She begs him one more time not to say anything, and he walks away. And it's really sad to see, because you really do feel bad for Elijah. He had his chance with Haley, and he just he's realizing now that he doesn't really have a chance with Haley anymore. Even though he wants to be with Haley. He wants to be with Haley, he just can't be anymore. And it's really sad to see. So Aiden's playing the best man that he can with Jackson, and Jackson tells him that they aren't done chasing old grudges, and there are new enemies, and Jackson's approving of Aiden and Josh's relationship, and tells him that they have no chance of winning the fight without having someone something to fight for. Now, of course, I'm thinking, well, Aiden just broke up with him, so are they going to get back together? What happened there? I mean, Jackson approving definitely just made me think, okay, so Jackson probably told him to break up with him, and now he's telling him to get back together. That's, that's going to be interesting. So Haley walks in to help Jackson finish up. She tells him that she wanted to see him, and she was nervous. It looks like the two of them are closer than they have ever been before. Um, Jackson gives Haley a necklace he had made, leaving her speechless. And I have to say, Haley, Haley and Jackson's wedding was just, it, it was a beautiful wedding. I do have to say that. Um, Davina walks, in, and Haley looked amazing in this episode, I do have to say. Um, definitely, she looked amazing. I thought that there... It was, it was great to see that. Um, Davina walks into the house when the ceremony is going to take place, and Josh beckons her next time him, but when 
basically Aiden comes in, things change, and, you know, basically Josh wanted to sit by her, but then Aiden comes in, and it's very awkward between the two of them, obviously. She's by herself with Cole nowhere in sight. She has no idea where Cole is. Of course, we know where Cole is. He's not coming to the wedding, and I'm just thinking, okay, why is he not at the wedding? I'm thinking, holy shit, he's not coming to the wedding because he's going to tell her. He's going to tell her what's really going on. He's dying. So Haley walks in, and the whole room stands staring at her. But also, I feel like Cole did not want to show up to the wedding because he was worried that he was just going to die at the wedding, and he did not want that to happen. Because he knows he's dying, he knows he's not going to make it, and we pretty much can tell in the beginning of this episode that Cole's not going to make it, and that he's going to die. You, you just can tell um, from certain scenes in this episode. You, you, can, you can just tell. So Jackson greets Haley by her side, and they both take each side of the ascending stairs as beautiful music is playing. Their ceremony begins being watched over by Klaus, and Elijah comes in, and Haley turns her face towards Jackson. And the vows are delivered by Jackson and Haley as they light the candle. Elijah's overcome with emotion. He's watching Haley marry another man, so it's really hard to see for him. They, they kiss and everything. It was really interesting with their ceremony, just the way that things went. I thought that was interesting. Elijah looks away, and Klaus is there by his side. The werewolves are, are um, inheriting the hybrid trait. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, Elijah um, approaches Klaus and asks him what he is up to. And Klaus plans, this was interesting, Klaus plans on harming Jackson. Um, you know, basically, he plans on harming Jackson. And basically, um, I, I thought that was really interesting. He tells him that he plans on harming him. Um, especially because the whole wedding and everything happened. So Elijah says he's not going to allow Klaus to harm Jackson, and I like that Elijah says that because, again, he told Haley that he wants her to be happy. And I like hearing Jackson saying, I, I like hearing Elijah saying that, I do have to say. That's one of the reasons that I really like Elijah's character because he really is a gentleman. While Klaus just is a man that gets things done for his family, as I said, I love both Klaus and Elijah. Klaus is not the one at fault here. I don't think either of them are doing something wrong. I think that what I love about Elijah though, that he wants Haley to be happy, but Klaus understands that Haley and Jackson are not going to end up happy together. What Klaus needs to understand, though, is that this is only because Haley needs custody of Hope. That's why she's doing this, and I think Klaus needs to realize that. So Klaus plans on harming Jackson, taking him out, and basically Klaus, you know, um, Klaus is begging Elijah to admit that he wants Jackson dead just as much as he does, and there's a strange look in Elijah's eyes after Klaus's words, and I kind of felt like that was just Elijah thinking about it, and I feel like Elijah doesn't want to think about it because of the red door and everything. He knows he has a violent side. He knows that, I mean, he never really shows it. Again, last episode, he did that because he was almost killed by Finn, and he needed to take him down. That's why that whole thing happened. But he never really shows his raging side to people. When it comes to Haley, he is always a gentleman, and you can definitely tell that he, and especially his whole PTSD thing, possibly the cam he says going on, you definitely have to feel concerned about him, especially after that strange look. So I was thinking, okay, something bad's going to happen to this wedding. So a celebration begins, Haley and Jackson are dancing down the street to the French Quarter, and Elijah looks to be keeping an eye on his brother, because he has no idea what Klaus is going to do. He doesn't know if Klaus is going to try to ruin their wedding, and I honestly thought the same thing. I'm thinking Klaus is probably going to ruin their wedding. He's going to destroy it, he's going to kill, do something bad to Jackson. I knew it was not going to end well. He's telling me he wishes for him to refrain from hurting Jackson, and Elijah does not want anyone to jeopardize Haley's happiness. And I like that he said that to Klaus, like he does not want him to do it. He stopped him. Because, again, this could have been a terrible, this could have been a tragic wedding, a terrible wedding, and I like that Elijah didn't want it to be a bad wedding, because that's what I was thinking going, I was thinking, okay, we're gonna see, like, a terrible wedding, like, the red wedding, basically, but that's not what happens here, because Elijah knows what Klaus is capable of, and he knows that if Klaus killed Jackson, it'd be on a full-on brawl, and it'd be vampires versus werewolves, and all that crazy shit would happen, and he knows that Haley doesn't want any of that, so Elijah's questioning Klaus's motives, and perhaps Klaus, you know, he thinks that this is because Klaus is, and I actually think this could be true, he's afraid that Klaus, that, that Jackson's a better father than he will be. And I kind of can understand that, because I mean, Hope would know Jackson more than she would Klaus. If Jackson and Haley, you know, if Haley gets full custody of Hope, then she's going to see Jackson a lot, and she's going to think Jackson's her real father, and he's going to be a better father to, hit, to Hope than Klaus would be. So Klaus, I think, is really jealous of Jackson. Also, he made that promise to Haley that if she's in danger or something, he's going to kill Jackson. But I think this isn't just about that. I think it's about that he's jealous, and he, I mean, the whole thing, with him is with Klaus that he's always the whole season he's wanted to be a father to hope he wanted to be a 
father to hope. He wanted to give hope some sort of, you know, he want to be in he wants to be in hope's life and basically that's really what I think is going on. I have to agree with Elijah that I think that's what's going on here and he tells Klaus point blank that he's not going to let him commit this evil. Clearly challenging him and basically you definitely see yeah, it was definitely interesting to see what was going to happen there. So Davina and Josh are in the parade, and a wounded Cole is noticed by Davina. Now remember, Cole was not at the wedding, and I'm I myself am thinking some bad's gonna happen here. Either he's gonna die, or some, or he has some sort of plan, or he's gonna tell her. And she runs to me and asks him what's wrong. And I love that he was straight up honest with her. This, I think this is the first time we've seen Cole be straight up honest. And he tells her that Finn cast a spell on him and he thought it'd be okay. But he's running out of time and you can see the look on Davina's face. She does not want to think about this. But now she knows why he wasn't returning her calls. Now she knows what's going on. And I like that Davina realizes what's going on here. My only complaint here is that I would have wanted Cole to tell Davina that he's working on Klaus and Rebecca. I would have wanted Cole to basically give like a warning to Davina like um Rebecca and Cole are not the Rebecca and Klaus are not the bad guys work with them I feel like he should have said that but of course he knows Davina's never going to do that because she has so much hatred for Klaus but of course as Klaus said in the first half you know in in the mid-season finale the people that you hate you still have to work with and she has to understand that so Cammy's watching over Hope as Klaus walks in. He thanks Cammy for looking after him. When Cammy asks him if he wants to hold her, he just stares with a blank look. And I think that's because he knows that he really can't be a father to Hope anymore. I think that's really what it is. He knows that he is not going to get much time with Hope. And he really wishes that he could have. And he knows he's not going to. And he feels terrible about it. And I really... You got to feel bad for Klaus. Especially because after Elijah said that, I definitely feel that's going through Klaus's head right now. Klaus is just thinking... I'm not a father to this child. I'm not a father. I'm not going to be a father to Hope. I she's not going to see me in her life much. I'm basically just going to be the other guy. That that's what he's going to be. He's going to be the guy that's always there, but she never realizes that's her real father. And it's really sad to see if that's going to happen. Definitely. So Aiden and Josh are repairing their relationship, sharing the happiness of everyone around them. They're they're doing really well. Jackson and Haley are dancing as Elijah watches on. Klaus approaches with Hope and asks Haley to join him as he proposes a toast. And I like what he said. He gave a, he tells them the story of Hope, and I like this. He commands them all to protect their daughter and love her as one of their own. And he calls Jackson forward and invites him and Haley to live in the home. It was a very sweet scene. I actually really enjoyed this. He toasts to Jackson Haley, but there's a smug smile on his face directed towards Elijah. And I'm just thinking that Elijah, the only reason that he's giving this toast is because of Elijah. Elijah made him think this. He didn't want to do this, but he is doing this because Elijah wanted to give him a good wedding, so that's why Klaus is doing it. I feel like Klaus did that because he just wanted to do what Elijah, you know, because Elijah basically wanted to give them a good wedding. That's why I feel Klaus did that. But I definitely feel like Klaus was upset at Elijah for him doing that. So Davina and Rebecca are scrambling. They need to find a cure for Cole because, of course, Rebecca gave that promise to Cole, and Davina's freaking out. She has no idea what's going on. They need to find a, Cole, a, a cure for Cole right now. <coughs> He's asking for a minute alone with Davina. He stands and walks towards her, telling her that he owes her a dance, and Elijah's going away from the ceremony. He knows that Klaus is mad at him. Every, he really feels out of place, definitely. Haley approaches and thanks, and I like that Haley thanked him, and everything was a very sweet scene. He tells her that everything's exactly that she intended. He also admits that he'll be moving out to join Marcel and his pack, and Haley tells him it doesn't mean that he has to leave, and just then, I that was huge when he said that. Because, of course, if you remember, episodes ago, he was approached by Marcel to do to join his pack, and finally, one of the big questions this season is, where is he, where does he really lie? And from this point on, Elijah's been pretty neutral. He hasn't really picked a side. He's worked with Klaus, but he also works with Marcel. But now that uh, Haley's gotten married and he knows that Klaus is mad at him, he really feels very out of place. So, of course, he'd go to Marcel. The werewolves, he just feels out of place with all this. So, of course, he'd go to Marcel. Even though Marcel and Klaus are, they're all essentially working together. They are. The only person that's not working with them is Finn. They are all essentially working together. I think that Marcel really is the best way to go, though, because that's away from all this. So Rebecca then walks in calling for Elijah. Rebecca and Elijah get Klaus to join them and tells him that Cole won't last the night. They know that Cole's going to die. And Marcel notices a certain girl walking in. And it looks like Freya has joined the party. And I'm like, oh no, Freya's going to cause trouble and this is not going to end well. 
So Davina and Cole are dancing, but she's overcome with emotion and crying her eyes out. And Cole is trying to joke on, joke with her to cheer her up. And he tells, and I like that he tells her of this man who had all the time in the world with a girl, and he hated him for it. And he asks Davina if he can be alone for his death because he really feels ashamed. And I think he feels ashamed because he was not honest with her. He knows that he was not honest with her, and he wishes that he was honest with her. And you really do have to feel bad for Cole, definitely. And Klaus, Elijah, and Rebecca are there to join him and tell him always and forever isn't something he can weasel out of. And I like that they said that because one of the big mo one of the big messages of the show is always and forever. In fact, that's the tagline of this series is always and forever. So as the party winds down, I like what Haley says to Jackson. She basically wants to know what's next with her and Jackson. Jackson tells her that knowing her, she wants to stay up all night watching Hope and it's fine with him. So Haley tells him that when she first got to New Orleans, she was pregnant and scared and she knew that he was watching her and never judging her for who she was. And he tells her he loves her and she says that's the first time anyone has ever said that to her. She tells him that she didn't marry him for all the people, she married him for her. They, and I like that she said that because... That's really true. I mean, at first she only did this to get full custody of Hope, but now she really is falling in love with him, and they finally kiss, and it looks like they're going to stay together, which I like seeing. I do actually really like them together, because Elijah right now is in no position to be with Haley. He has a lot of mental problems going on. No one trusts him. No one's talking to him. No one really wants to be around him. So Elijah right now, he's not really in the position to date Haley. As much as I want these two together, I know that Elijah shouldn't be with Haley right now. I do want them together eventually by the end of this show. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that those two just are not in the position to be together right now. So this scene was very hard to watch. I have to say Daniel Sharman in this scene just killing it. Killing it in these final two episodes. He was amazing here. And I, this, I, I knew that this was going to be the end of Cole. I knew it because the second that he approached Davina, I'm like, he's going to die. He's going to die. And I knew something bad was going to happen this wedding. Definitely I knew that. Cole's in his last moments, and he's telling his family that all his life, all he ever wanted was to care, was them to care about him. He's come to by Rebecca, who tells him he doesn't have lawn and he will die. She tells him that they will consecrate him with the witch's ancestors and try the be their best to bring him back. And Because, I mean, they could always bring him back. So Davina crawls over to her dying lover, who tells her he is not scared. He gives her one last smile before he dies in Rebecca's arms, de holding Davina's hands and... That was really sad to see, but what I'm ho hoping that this is is that Rebecca's going to try to convince Davina to work with them because Davina does need to work with them. Even though she's against Klaus, she needs to work with them because she should not be working with Finn. It's just not going to end well for her. It's not. He doesn't care about her. He cares about ki killing Klaus. That's what he cares about. He doesn't care about anyone else. He doesn't. So that was really sad to see, and I have to say that, that was great when we saw it, and a very well done death, I mean, especially because, and it really shows that it's not the end of Cole. We're probably going to see him again. They're probably going to bring him back from the dead. That's how these shows work, and do I really have a problem with them doing that? No, because he still need. they still have time. Him and Davina can still be together. They can bring him back. They can find a cure, unless somehow Finn has made that so they can't do that. But they can always do that. They just need to find a new body for Cole. That's what they need to do. Because the body he's in is dead. So they need to find a new body for him. And we'll have to see what happens. So I definitely feel like it's going to be one of the plots of um, when the show comes back. So Finn wakes up and asks Freya how she saved him. She tells him that she had a protective spell against Elijah. And Freya tells him that they need to protect each other if Dahlia's, if Dahlia's on her way. Of course, we know that Dahlia's still alive. She tells her story of once she was taken. She assures him that Dahlia will come take what's hers. And she is coming back to take hope. And that is how the episode ends. And holy shit, guys, this was such an amazing episode. That was the perfect way to end this episode. Perfectly makes us anticipate the second half of the, well, the third, the final half of this season. And just, wow, this was by far the best episode of the season. Absolutely loved it. And there's so much to talk about right now. First of all, I really want to talk about Elijah. Elijah, as I said, is in no position to be with Haley. But de going with Marcel, I think, is going to be the best thing for him. Um, him and Marcel work very well together. They do. I mean, we Elijah helped Marcel with a lot of things. He helped Marcel with Gia. He helped Marcel get all those wear vampires on his side. So I really feel like working with Marcel, yeah, it's the way to go. It really is. And that might help him out with that might help out his mother cuz I mean 
I mean, she's still alive, definitely. Even though she's not there, Esther is still alive. She's just under a spell right now, so maybe they're gonna fix that spell. I could definitely see it happening. Um, now, as far as Cole goes, I definitely feel like Rebecca and and uh, Davina are gonna try to find some sort of spell to help out Cole and get him back to another body or something. We'll see what happens there. Um, Rebecca and Marcel, they didn't talk much about this, but they did have that one scene where Haley talked to Rebecca about it. I don't know if Rebecca's really going to think about that possibility, but I definitely could see them think about that in the future. I'm definitely interested in seeing what's going to happen there. Klaus, also, I felt really bad for him. I think Klaus right now, knowing that he's not going to be with Hope, I think he's going to try to find a way to be with Hope. We'll see what happens there. Definitely, Haley and Hope, this is like the worst time Haley and Jackson could have gotten married, because now Dolly is on her way to get Hope, and this is not going to end well for any of them. Um, Aiden and Josh seem okay. I mean, I guess they're, I guess they're okay. Haley and Jackson, I do really like them together. I do have to say that. I do definitely really like them together. And, uh, I, I like seeing that overall. I did. Um, with not too much of Marcel in this episode, really. Even though Elijah's working with Marcel, not really too much with him in regards of plot development. Rebecca, I don't know if Rebecca's gonna do this, but I really hope she does this. I really hope she convinces Davina to work with her in class. Because as we know, she was working to, with Finn, but as we know, um, she really does not trust Klaus, so I really feel like Rebecca should try to convince her to work with them, because that's just the best way to go overall. But overall, guys, this episode was amazing. I absolutely loved it. As usual, another fantastic episode. By far the best episode of the season. Let me know what you guys saw this episode. And now we have to wait till March 9th. And you know what the worst part of that is, guys? March 9th is the first day of a very long, very long, stressful week for my musical. Because that's tech week, and I won't be home till like 10 o'clock every night. And it's it's going to be really annoying that it's coming back March 9th. It really is annoying. They, if they could come back one week later, make my life a lot easier. But whatever, I what's done is done. I guess we have to we, we have to wait till March 9th, whatever. Uh, that, that means a flash is going to haste, arrow is going to haste. I hate that CW does this, but whatever. What's done is done, and I'll see you guys then. Let me know what you guys saw this episode, and I'm going to definitely miss the originals for a little bit. And, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be my review for tonight's episode of Better Call Saul. So I'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.